Um, so Jordan's going to introduce the next speaker. In the uh, International Conference of Women's Issues in London, Anil Kumar spoke about how community is a strong element of his practice as being an MRA in India. And having heard this and thought, he's absolutely right, like community of activism. So we found in the uh, Facebook group Men's Rights Community, which is arguably the greatest men's rights group on Facebook at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. It's 2,500 members strong now, I believe. That's uh, nearly uh, 2,200. 2,200. And it's a really great place because what we do <coughs> as men's equality members, as MIs, whatever we like to use, it can be a bit depressing. But having a family around you who you can lean on to support and strength really does help us through the dark days, and that is what uh, Adam has fostered and built with the men's rights community, and it's a privilege to call him my friend. So, without much further ado, Adam. Uh, thank you, Jordan, for that lovely intro. Uh, okay. I'd like to talk to all of you about, about, ugh, about feminist patriarchy theory. Originally, I was to be talking about the Istanbul Convention and the Duluth model, which is what the Istanbul Convention is entirely based on. And there's also the European Council's response to combating the issues of violence against women. But the more I thought about it, I realised there's a much... Oh, they're not, they're not, they're not. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll, move, I'll move myself a little bit closer. Okay. Right. But the more I thought about it... <laughs> hey. Is that for sure it's loud enough? Right. But the more I thought about it, I realised there's a much more serious issue, to talk, a much larger one to talk about. One that doesn't just lie at the foundation of the Duluth model, but also one of the primary foundations behind cultural misandry, i.e. the hatred and prejudice against men and boys. Patriarchy theory. So, what is patriarchy theory? Patriarchy theory is the belief that men as a group have all the power, they have always had all the power, and they have used that power to oppress women and deny them any power. It is the belief that women are powerless, oppressed chattel, and men are their privileged oppressors. And that is just simply how it has always been. <coughs> it is the belief that men logically must innately be psychopathic sadists. If men as a group have oppressed their nearest, their dearest, their mothers, their sisters, their daughters, their wives, then what other conclusion can you possibly draw? If there is no other way to explain the difference in historic rights to responsibilities between the sexes other than all men have oppressed all women, then men are monsters. That is patriarchy theory, and that is the belief that ties all the different forms of feminism together. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Okay, so I find a, bunch, a few crazy people have some absurd beliefs, but how does that really affect me? Doesn't sound that important. Now, if this was just a minority of mentally ill people, then I would agree with you. But we're not just talking about a few crazy people. We're talking about an idea, an unfalsifiable faith-based belief that has aggressively taken over and is so entrenched in every aspect of mainstream society, you will struggle to find an area which it does not exist. Patriarchy theory has actually been taught in the social science departments of universities for decades, possibly even going as far back as the 1960s. And in the last decade or so, it's even started to move outside of these social science departments, with the hard sciences being all that is free from this dogmatic infection. This is unproven, unfalsifiable, faith-based dogma that, is being taught, that has been taught as fact in higher education for over half a century. And as such, the result and as such, yesterday's indoctrination is today's mainstream society. Journalists, psychologists, police officers, high court judges, divorce mediators, lawyers, politicians, bureaucrats, primary school teachers, and of course, professors. 
These are all highly qualified individuals that create the mainstream of society. And as part of their qualification, as part of going through the process of getting their qualifications, they are taught patriarchy theory. And with nearly all of them pushing this belief as fact into the mainstream, and have done for a very long time, the results have been truly terrifying. There are a few, there are a few examples better than that, than that of the, or there are a few examples better of this in, of patriarchy theory in the law and the culture than that of the Duluth model, which was a model to tackle the issue of domestic violence. <coughs> Created by a bunch of crazy women up in Duluth, Minnesota in 1980, that model is now everywhere. According to the Duluth model, domestic violence is nothing but an issue of man's innate desire... No. Domestic violence is nothing but an issue of men using violence and power to control and oppress women. That's it. No male victims, no female perpetrators, no other possible reason to explain family violence in the home. Nope. Apparently, domestic violence is nothing but man's innate desire to have woman's throat underneath his boot. And nothing more. This model is in America's legislation. It's called VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act. It's in Canada's legislation. It's in Australia's legislation. New Zealand's. And of course, it's in our legislation too, as well as all of Europe. If you look up domestic violence and abuse on gov.uk, it will tell you in black and white, quote, our response to domestic violence and abuse is included within the Violence Against Women and Girls Action Plan. Here's a little reading of it. Ending Violence Against Women and Girls Strategy 2016 to 2020. Primary Prevention, page 16. Violence against women and girls is both a cause and consequence of gender inequality. We will continue to challenge the deep-rooted social norms, attitudes and behaviours that discriminate against and limit women and girls across all communities. Let me read that just one more time. Primary prevention, page 16. Violence against women and girls is both a cause and consequence of gender inequality. We will continue to challenge the deep-rooted social norms, attitudes and behaviours that discriminate against and limit women and girls across all, across all communities. That is the UK government's domestic legislation to tackle the issue of domestic violence. Now, to give you an idea of just how bad that is, if you are a man and you are the victim, you are the, you are the victim of human trafficking, forced marriage, rape, sexual assault or domestic violence, and the UK Crown Prosecution Service, against all probability, acknowledge it, well, then you as a man or boy go down as a victim in the official crime prosecution service, crime statistics, as a victim of violence against women and girls. You heard that right. Go ask the CPS and they will tell you outright that 30% of the victims of violence against, or, or VAG, violence against women and girls, are actually men and boys. 30%. That's not even including the fact that under, in this country, by legal definition, legally, a woman cannot rape a man. Nor does that include that VAG, violence, the violence against women and girls, includes any and all acts of female circumcision, and yet not a single act of male circumcision. Nor does that include the fact that if you even raise so much as a finger to a woman, then you spend the night in a jail cell. Yet women assaulting men? Not so much. Because if a woman slaps a man, well, that's not really assault. He probably did something to deserve it anyway. And all of that included, somehow men and boys still managed to make up 30% of violence against women and girls. Why have UK Duluth legislation when we can have European Duluth legislation? The Istanbul Convention. It's so bald, it doesn't even attempt to hide and sugarcoat itself as legislation like this generally does. The Istanbul Convention, quote, Preamble, page five. 
recognizing that violence against, women, violence against women is a manifestation of historically unequal power relations between women and men, which have led to domination over and discrimination against women by men and to the prevention of the full advancement of women. Recognizing the structural nature of violence against women as gender-based violence, and that violence against women is one of the crucial societal mechanisms by women are forced into a subordinate position compared with men. Again, once more. Pre <laughs> no, no. Preamble, page five. Recognizing that violence against women is a manifestation of historically unequal power relations between men and women, which have led to domination over and discrimination against women by men to the prevention of the full advancement of women. Recognizing the structural nature of violence against women as gender-based violence. And that violence against women is one of the crucial social mechanisms by, w by which women are forced into a subordinate position compared with men. The overwhelming majority of victims of violent crime are men. Women are, men are, women are significantly more likely to assault men or children than men are to assault women or children. And yet we have a Violence Against Women Act. The very fact that we do should be all that it takes to refute any notions of patriarchal oppression. This was signed by every nation in Europe, minus Belarus and Russia. Only one of our MPs voted against this legislation, while 138 voted in favour. Duluth and patriarchy theory, in which it is founded on, is the status quo. Whether the people espousing this, espousing this belief understands it or not, whether directly or indirectly, they are enforcing the idea that men are not human beings. According to patriarchy theory, men are the oppressors in any and every situation. Even when the Titanic went down and they followed the standard British naval practice of women and children first for ships that were sinking slow enough to order an evacuation, even that was a convert act of patriarchal oppression against women. Somehow. I mean, our fathers, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers, etc., all of them hated women. And that hatred goes back to the dawn of our species. I mean, if we were going to acknowledge that... I mean... Oh, that's a... Excuse me. Miss out a bit there. Yeah, it goes back to the dawn of our species. So the idea of men putting women's safety and well-being before their own is simply absurd. There must have been an oppressive reason to explain why men would go down with the ship. I mean, if we acknowledge that in this evil patriarchal world, women's lives are valued higher than men's as opposed to lower, then maybe our stupid beliefs will require a little bit of revision. Now, nah, men are just the oppressors in any and every situation. And any time it's women first, that's merely a convert act of oppression against women to keep women in their subjugation. Like, for instance, the Istanbul Convention. One day, the Istanbul Convention too will also be declared a convert act of oppression against women that the evil men of today are merely using as justification to keep women in their subjugation. I mean, us men, we oppress women every day whether it's turning the air conditioning up in the office, <laughs> sitting comfortably on a bus, or merely just telling a, a, a lovely woman in the street that she looks nice. Though, be careful with that last one if you live in Nottinghamshire and you look like the guy from the Human Centipede too. Because, <laughs> because that will now get you arrested for, quote, misogyny hate crime. Also, the fact that calling a girl nice is now misogyny hate crime, well, that's also an act of patriarchal oppression against women. Somehow. The second longest oppressive regime in history was of the Janissaries, the slaves of the Ottoman Empire for over 900 years. Now, honestly, what is 900 years compared to all of recorded history and beyond? The success of the patriarchy is unparalleled to literally anything else we know outside of fiction. 
Men as a group have allegedly oppressed women for all of history, and women, and any time women rose up, they fell just as quick. Feminism never actually successfully rose up against the patriarchy in the slightest. The patriarchy is as strong as ever. The patriarchy lets feminism rise and exist as part of our grand master plan to keep women in their subjugation. Yeah. <laughs> what can we say? Feminism is the patriarchy's puppet. Yeah. Or, you know, to put it another way, if that, if that is really reality, then us men, we are the greatest oppressors who ever lived. <laughs> we have supposedly ruled for all of recorded history over women and successfully managed to keep women as group underneath our boot as chattel. And they've never successfully freed themselves. Now, if that isn't proof of men's innate superiority, then what is? <laughs> And, if that is indeed reality, that men are both innately evil and superior, well, then the flip side to that is that women are innately stupid and inferior. That is the logical conclusion of patriarchy theory. To believe in patriarchy theory is to justify its existence. <laughs> now, <laughs> unless, we want, unless, unless we want to acknowledge the logical conclusion of patriarchy theory, then maybe it's time we did a little bit of revision between the current and historical power relations between the sexes. That maybe women had other forms of power that men didn't. As the saying goes, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And maybe, just maybe, men's side of the grass isn't as green as we've always been led to believe. Men are not monsters. Men and boys are human beings too. It's time to stop accepting our second-class citizenship, and it's time to stop apologising for being men. Yes. We, we, simply, we simply cannot address any of these issues by kowtowing to fiction. It's in our interest to compromise where we can. And it's in our interest to not compromise where we can't. The patriarchy, it's a lie. It is the great lie. Feminism is cancer. Yeah.